without any further delay. Let's do it. It's Friday. This is Friday Fabulous Florida. It's time for Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. A look at the weirdest stories from our weirdest state. Thank you, Albert, for putting in something with reptiles to lead off Friday Fabulous Florida. (laughs) Hey! Florida. I, I think seed. it was last week. Someone yeah. was like, "Wait, there's no gators this week for in Florida." So I made sure to find a couple of gator stories that are pretty relevant, and this is a pretty recent one as well. Nice. Yes, this is uh, the fact that residents in Florida are reporting a huge comeback in crocodiles. Everybody, what? So, yeah, they are huge too, as large as eight feet. They're getting near and in homes. The recent sighting of the American crocodile in one central Florida county has scientists scratching their heads. The crocodile was believed to be extinct in Florida. The American crocodile last seen on December 4th in Brevard County, located about 75 miles southeast of Orlando. The number of American crocodiles has increased nearly tenfold since 1975. They thought they were gone, but they're back. Yeah, and crocodiles way. Are, are way, way, way bigger than alligators. So this is a lot scarier for those in Florida. Yeah. I mean, they've got themselves a situation. What I he's think. got going yeah. here is a situation. Uh, the Southern Florida uh, man who uh, had his dog's coat died to look like a Peach, uh, Pikachu character just because he wanted to go viral, I guess, on social media. I hate that. Oh, it's awful. He did go viral. It was at uh, courtside at a Miami Heat game, so you know a lot of people are going to photograph that. Um, But he is now facing charges. The Miami-Dade Animal Services crew had already discovered this puppy uh, and this Pikachu, this uh, uh, Pikachu, is that how you say it? Pikachu, yeah. yeah. Pikachu <laughs> was apparently in this store that sold puppies, which is, again, please, I won't get off on that today. Uh, and the animal services uh, assistant director said there was a staff member holding the dog in her lap. We got that photograph at the time. It's unlawful for any person to possess, sell, or otherwise transfer within the county any dyed or artificially colored rabbit or other animal. A few days after that inspection, the, um, the, the citation was issued. I mean, again, there's a limit to what they do, you know. And they've issued 16 citations against this world-famous puppies place. That's where they sell these puppies and they dye them to make them look like Pikachus. It's pretty disgusting. But it's very Florida. Um, puppies are very delicate. They do tend to have very low immune system as they develop, so it's the nature of the business that dogs get sick, says the owner of the puppy store. But when you paint them up and put chemical no. things on them like this, it's um, it can be a bigger stressor. So There was a story about, I know this has nothing to do with Florida, but there was a story about turtles. People used to dye, color paint dye turtles and sell different colored turtles and it was killing them yeah you know why you would want to to deface an animal to alter it which could potentially make it sick makes me sad well we treat us sadly we treat animals like things you know not like the creatures that they are we don't give them any dignity a lot of the time and it just you know and even if something happened to a pet of yours or you know and somebody else was involved in whatever happened, it's treated as property by, by the law. You know, those laws are changing worldwide, but we're in America are way behind. An Orlando man bites a police officer after hitting another with a car and dancing in traffic. Wow. There's a lot to this. This is now uh, now you're cooking with fire. Yeah. yeah. If you get it in order, you get extra points. Uh, Well, he was, uh, uh, he bit the officer. He hit another car and he danced in traffic. He was fleeing Winter Garden cops, struck an officer with the car, hit another on the leg, and then, I guess, in the altercation, there was a bite. 
His name is Malik Smith, 27. He um, jumped on the counter at a mobile gas station. At uh, it's on West Colonial Drive. You know where that is? That's um, right by I the think Whole Foods. Near the Whole Foods, there. Yeah. Um, by the way, I invited John Daly to join us maybe for next week, next uh, week's Friday, um, so we can have uh, the. Uh, he loves the Whole Food. He tracks all the Whole Food locations, <laughs> so he would be perfectly. Uh, accustomed to this story. Winter Garden cops responded to the store around 7.50 in the evening. This guy had already left. He jumped on the counter. He jumped down. He was harassing customers on his way out. He caused approximately $2,000 in damage. The officer went over the surveillance video with the store owner, saw this guy. Then he ran from the officers, ignoring verbal commands as he entered his vehicle, sped off from the gas station's fuel island to the other side of the parking lot. After a left turn, he then accelerated, and he slammed into one of the cars. Two officers reported stepping out of the vehicle's erratic path as it accelerated in their direction. Kim, it was a, it was a brutal onslaught. It was a mess. And uh, I guess there was a bite, and he yeah, did, they had he, a they even had the canine unit involved, and they used the taser. So they, they used, used the taser. They, yeah, they they emptied the the supplies they, on. The they table. emptied the arsenal of. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, what you have there is a situation. I what think. he's got you going here <laughs> is a situation. Yeah. You had to bring out all the. He appeared to resist the effects of pepper spray as well. So they really did <laughs> use everything. Man. Um, well, he faces charges of battery on a law enforcement officer, aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer, fleeing or attempting to elude a law enforcement officer, criminal mischief, violation of probation. Gosh, the guy was out on probation. What a surprise that is. Uh, and there's some other charges, too. So uh, good luck to that young guy. Photos of a floating alligator tattoo go viral. A tattoo of an alligator appearing to float along a client's arm. That's gone viral on social media. Do you have it, Albert? Oh. And oh, it's it pretty like cool. It's real. Exactly. That's why uh. that is a super cool tattoo. That is wild. That is some really good tattoo work, if I can just say that. And uh, that's possibly, this is a quote, that's possibly one of the most dope tattoos I've ever seen. <laughs> Incredible work. Yeah. Except it's considered micro-realism is what they call that. You have to constantly look down at your arm and go, oh, God, what's on me? Yeah. yeah. A Florida man gets a prison sentence for fraud charges, my friends. He previously served time for practicing medicine without a license, so he really likes the fraud, really <laughs> likes to rep stories that are not necessarily reflective of his real life. He was arrested and convicted of impersonating a doctor when he was a teenager. He's now gotten another term in prison for defrauding his employer. Malachi Love Robinson, he's 25. He's been sentenced to 28 months in prison after pleading guilty to grand theft and organized scheme to defraud 20,000 bucks. Uh, also ordered him on two years probation. He was arrested um, on felony theft. He essentially defrauded his employer through a, which was a shipping company that he was working for. And but his real claim to fame, I hate to put it this way, was being arrested after, after opening the New Birth, New Life Medical Center where he posed as a doctor and he stole $30,000 from a patient in her 80s. And it was, I hate when, you know, essentially old people are preyed upon. He called himself Dr. Love. Love Robinson is his last name. He stole an additional 20000 from a doctor. He was arrested in Virginia that year after prescribing treatment to an undercover police officer who was impersonating a patient. To catch the impersonators, you gotta be an impersonator. <laughs> That's how they got him. Uh, Brevard County is where we Ooh, go next. it's a wild idea, but it just might work. Brevard County helicopter pilot temporarily blinded by a green laser shot into the cockpit of the helicopter he was flying. Mm. A man is arrested. Sometimes they don't get those people because it happens so quickly. But this guy was temporarily blinded. 
uh, said, get that guy. He's a green laser hitting us multiple times, is what pilot Brandon McIntyre told dispatch. Brevard County's helicopter team was helping the Palm Beach Police Department with its search for a man who had allegedly attacked a roommate with a laser beam when this began to flash into the cockpit. The two incidents are not connected. It's very dangerous. It could cause a crash. And they were able to figure out where the laser was coming from, had Palm Bay police officers make a visit, and Dean Gordon Bolay, 33 years old, was arrested and booked into jail. (laughs) That's right. Good day, sir. Exactly. Uh, The eye doctor says that the pilot will be fine. And finally, I'm effed up, says a Florida man, arrested after driving drunk with so much alcohol in his system that he was four times the legal limit according to deputies. Wow. What he's got going here is a situation. He does. Uh, Deputies said a concerned citizen called them after seeing the man driving recklessly in the area of State Road 100 West and County Road 202. Well, that's right. That's right near the Whole Foods. It's so weird again. During the traffic stop, the unnamed man admitted to being effed up and refused to do a sobriety test. Because you'll probably make me do some dances, the man said. (laughs) <laughs> the deputy then put the man in handcuffs and admonished him for driving drunk. Admonished is a ding word. According to the sheriff's office, the man's breath alcohol level was 301. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. What? Yeah. That That's is uh, what he's got going here is a situation. Yeah, it is way past a situation. Those are like the first three decimals in a, a pie or something, right? Is, <laughs> is that what that is? Oh, is that right? Oh, that would have been a good uh, high ground for him to take. But uh, he was booked, and he's now cooling his heels. Hey, Mark, we have one more jail. story. It's probably we do? Story. Wait a minute. Oh. What is the, what's the one more story? It's a, it's a Florida woman suing Kraft. Oh, that's right. I skipped over it. Where is it? Hang on a second. Oh, my God. Albert, if it was another is... story, I would have let it pass. But uh, No, you're right. This is a great story. Where, where, Florida? Here it is. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, that's completely my fault. But, of course, Albert, you will Whoever be. Whoever is producing this You will be blamed. Has even no you, idea. You had nothing to do with it. Yeah, it's just, you, again, it was completely my fault. But you will be blamed. Uh, a Florida woman is suing Kraft, the people who make the cheese. She's suing for $5 million. Everyone. What? Yes. She says that Velveeta microwave mac and cheese takes longer to make than advertised. <laughs> Who is having that conversation? The Apparently they're having it in court in Florida. The label on a cup of Velveeta's microwavable mac and cheese says the meal only takes three and a half minutes to prepare. But a Florida woman says this is false. She's suing Kraft for $5 million. Amanda Ramirez of Hialeah, Florida, has filed this $5 million class action lawsuit against Kraft Heinz Food Company, saying that the food producer's Velveeta shells and cheese takes longer than advertised to prepare. And she wants her $5 million. The product instructions say to microwave the cup for three and a half minutes, but Ramirez's attorneys say this number doesn't account for the other four steps required to prepare the pasta and removing the lid and sauce pouch, adding water, microwaving, and stirring. These are all things that apparently they feel uh, make it take longer than just the three and a half minutes. And they want $5 million because of that. Ooh, it's a wild idea. Well, that just I, might I don't know that it will advertising, work. you know. Yeah, if maybe. You're- if you're this gonna has a better it. chance than the, the Red Bull not actually giving you wings from yeah. a couple years back. <laughs> that, uh, good luck to her uh, fighting the Kraft Corporation, you know? Uh, the every person fighting against uh, the giant corporation. We'll see how it goes, and we'll keep you posted. That's Friday Fabulous Florida for today. This has been Friday Fabulous Florida. There is a gigantic alligator in my kitchen. <laughs> Y'all come back now, here. 
Well, it is a tradition on the show. In the chat, you can pick a favorite. We will pick a favorite here. I'll remind you, Florida seeing a comeback in crocodiles as large as eight feet near homes there. They thought they were extinct, but they're back in a big way. South Florida man cited the dog being dyed to look like a Pikachu from Pokemon. The uh, Florida man biting the officer after hitting another one with a car. Uh, photos of the floating alligator tattoo that went viral. The uh, dude who got prison sentenced for fraud charges, he had previously been sentenced after pretending to be uh, a doctor and actually practicing medicine and opening a clinic without a license. He's only 25 years old. The woman suing the craft company for $5 million because it takes longer than the three and a half minutes that's advertised for the mac and cheese. The helicopter pilot blinded and the I effed up Florida man with four times the legal limit on alcohol. What is the chat saying the cheese uh lee hester vote. somebody has to take are on voting on the poll i i can only put four options i put pikachu the florida biting the officer four times the limit and the the the, the craft fake news cheese so okay uh, so we will have that that in the youtube chat you will see a poll so albert has culled all of those that i just picked all of those that I listed, and those are there in the poll. One of them will probably be the winner. Well, you, I see a couple of croc, uh, crocodile tattoo write-ins, yeah, uh, some write-in votes in the chat. <laughs> that's my vote. You like the uh, Florida tattoo? You like the uh, uh, crocodile tattoo? That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want it on my body, but I, it's fascinating to look at. It was fascinating. I don't think, is, is it the story, though? I mean, the most Florida story was the dancing in traffic. I suppose, yeah. After jumping yeah, on the in traffic, biting counter. an officer, yeah, and pepper spray and a taser, and and a dog try to try to take him down. I still yeah, like that's that probably too. the lawlessness. Is the um, I want whatever I, he's having. He survived all of that. I, I know mean, that's still, true. He's, he's a tough going. tough dude. I I I have to say this also. I I kind of like the Florida woman who's suing for five million because the mac and cheese from Kraft takes more than three and a half minutes. I don't know. Um. All right. When we come back, we'll talk about McCarthy, the GOP.